Persons or parts? Hmm. Again, another attack I've had from Trinitarians. They say, well, we believe in three persons. You say three parts, but you don't have any scripture for what you are saying about this thing of parts. Well, I haven't really done the research on that or study on that. And one of my viewers, been a viewer for a long time, posted a comment and uh, Lord showed him this. And I'm going to put, give credit where credit's due here. Um, here we have the comment. I'll put it up on screen. Andrew Burns said, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Okay? Tied to, that's Romans 12, verses 4 through 5, tied to this, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For the body is not one member, but many. So now are they mem many members, yet but one body. For our comely parts, there you go, have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Okay, and then he says, gives the references there. Um, the correct words to use to describe the different members, parts of the Godhead are members or parts. Okay, again, well, no, it's persons, it's three persons, and th you have no scripture for that. Anybody out there, I'll give you $1,000 in cash if you can show me where it says persons in relation to God. Right, I covered it in my book. There's not one verse that says persons in relation to God. Not one. There are no persons in God. There are no three different persons. That is blasphemy. All right? Man is created after the similitude of God. There's three parts to man. Body, soul, spirit. I've been preaching this for years now. Many years. Some of these Trinitarians still don't get it. But let's look at this whole thing here. We're, we'll start out in Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 5. I'll go through these scriptures rather quickly here because you don't really need to do a big in-depth study on this because it's just plain common sense. I mean, do you call your body, soul, spirit, do you call it three different persons? You say, well, no. Well, where did you get your body, soul, and spirit from? What's the model that that's based off of? It's based off of, you know, the Lord. And like I said in another one of my videos, all these people, how do you explain God? Well, it's like an orange or like a football or it's like water. It's like this. It's like, Or you could just go with what the Bible says. We're made after the similitude of God. Look no further than yourself to see how the consistency of God is. It's not that difficult. You get spoiled by philosophy when you become a Trinitarian. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 5. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. You say, but it's, it's talking about members of the body of Christ. There's many, you know, millions of members of the body of Christ. So are you saying it's millions of Christs and, or persons or, or parts of God? Or, I understand what the little Trinitarian devils will do. They can never admit when they've actually been made a fool of and their system is falling apart they always have to try to get some on their new way or whatever else no it's just simply saying that there are multiple members but one body and the one that really proves that is first corinthians chapter 12 let's go there now first corinthians chapter 12 he has it starting here in verse 12 um all right Verse 12, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Okay? Now it's talking about there the members of your body in, in terms of hands and feet and eyes and whatever else because it gets on down into that there. But the whole point is it's talking about how that there can be multiple members but one body, multiple parts. Okay? Um, it's just crazy that Trinitarians can't seem to get that. I mean, really, is, is can you call your body a person? Well, yeah. How about your soul and your spirit? Can you call those other persons? See, it's, it's bizarre. It's really weird. Um, what do you say here? 14, verse 14, For the body is not one member but many. All right. Uh, verse 20, 
but now are they many members yet but one body? Uh, verse 24, For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. Well, I'll just keep reading down here to, to verse 27. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Okay? So... Um, again, I know how the Trinitarians are going to duck this. They'll say, well, it's talking about the parts of the body and whatever else. It's listed there in context. It's the hand and the foot and whatever else. Um, so you can't use that to prove body, soul, and spirit. Okay, well, then what are body, soul, and spirit? <laughs> See, it's just a logical thing. You say that's the parts. I mean, I can look at my vehicle sitting right here and on the outside I can see headlights and I can see turn signals, bumpers, the hood, the body, the windshield, the wheels, the tires. That's the stuff that's on the outside but inside it's got a motor, a transmission, it's got other things I can't see right now. Are, is the motor and transmission the things I can't see? Are they not parts of the vehicle? See? It, no, those are other vehicles. You know, There's multiple vehicles there. So, it's stupid. It's beyond stupid. The, the parts that make up our body, whether they are internal like the soul and the spirit or the out external hand and foot and eyes and mouth and whatever, they're all just parts of our body. You don't say that there are two persons within me. You know, I, I just wish people would just get to the point where they could give up their sin of Trinitarianism. And just say, okay, yeah, I've been in sin for years, but this whole philosophy of Trinitarianism, which has no basis in Scripture, it's not anywhere in there. I mean, quit putting put Jesus Christ down. I know that's just such an important thing for Trinitarians to just continually knock Jesus down. He's not the Father. He's not the most powerful, you know, being in heaven. He's just this lesser guy and, and you know, whatever. And But you, you really ought to quit doing that. Okay, because you're going to meet Jesus Christ someday, and I think that he cares a little bit about being exalted and magnified. So, um, I could keep going on and on, but uh, thank you, brother, for the verses of Scripture there that prove the parts and members, you know. Um, the members of God, of the Godhead, would be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Again, we're not modalists. We don't teach that there are no differences between them. You know, there's no difference between the body, soul, and spirit. Uh, those are three different things. And you get into the thing these people say, well, no, there's only a soul, a body and soul, like you saw in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I read that earlier. Uh, no, there's a body, soul, spirit. There has to be three. You can't say the soul and the spirit, there's no difference between them. Yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there absolutely is. There has to be because we're made in God's image. There are three in God. There are three in us. Three parts, three members, if you want to say it that way. Like I said, you look at a vehicle, there's parts that you can see, there's parts you can't see. The stuff that you can't see, you don't come up with some kind of a different name for those. But, you know, the whole thing is, you have to get to a point in time where you realize, just like the Lord did, where they come along and they're saying to him, they say, you know, Lord, don't you know you offended the Pharisees? And he says, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind shall lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. Trinitarians are blind. They are willingly blind. They don't want to see the truth. And you try to show them the truth and they just say, ah, I reject it. No, I can't stand that. No. Okay, the Lord's not revealing himself to you then. Go on and believe in your contradicting, lying trinity. Um, because that's all that it is. It's a, trini it's, a, it's a satanic philosophy that departs from the King James Bible, the plain teachings of the King James Bible. And uh, what more can I say? So that is going to be it. We'll see you in the next study. Thank you for watching.